Okay, um, hello, my name is Alex Pirogu, and uh, today we'll be taking a close look at Bitcoin uh, following my methodology, uh, step by step methodology, uh, multiple time frame, multiple factor that combines technicals and fundamentals. So, the first step of my methodology is to uh, go into the business cycle, either from a, a market or economic statistics point of view. Now, because I will be following Bitcoin, I won't be going into that because I don't think it's necessary. So I will continue from straight to the second step, which is the commitment of traders report. So let's see what the COT data uh, have to say about Bitcoin. Top chart is Bitcoin. Um, the bottom part of the uh, chart is commitment of traders report, the uh, net position of the commercials. And uh, based on these, I've created a an, uh, an, uh, commitment of traders report uh, signal system which shows me uh, great signals based on the positions of the uh, commercials. Um, these are not, I would say practically, these are more like alerts rather than signals because this is on the weekly chart, but my actual positions come from the daily time frame. So if I've got something here, then I will automatically switch to the daily chart. So, but this is how it looks like. So um, since um, late February, when I had a COT buy signal, um, the market obviously responded to that, but um, I'm very close to having a short signal. So this is potentially um, potentially bearish. Second, a uh, third step actually, then I look at sentiment, market sentiment, and then another biggie in the factors that I'm looking. Again, weekly chart. The bottom panel is the uh, um, the mark of the speculative sentiment indicator. Uh, one of the few I'm following. And um, what I've highlighted here in green and red are the points where you, uh, sentiment was at an extreme. And I've also kept the COT uh, signal system just to get a, a bit of a view for both, a feel for both. And um, what we have here that from a sentiment point of view, that uh, Bitcoin seems to be um, at, an, uh, at an extreme. There's too much speculation. The next part in my methodology is check seasonals. Right, seasonals. This is uh, my. Uh, now we've switched to the daily chart. Seasonals at the bottom. Uh, as we can see from the 2nd of February till the 16th of February, the seasonal uh, indicator was uh, saying that uh, there was a positive backwind for Bitcoin and the market followed that uh, seasonal pattern. Now from the 16th of Feb to the 13th of March. Seasonal, seasonality was usually bearish. Um, uh, the Bitcoin didn't follow that script. And now it's entering a, a period from the 13th of March over to the 2nd of May when seasonals are bullish. Um, that said, um, seasonality, the, the indicator below will differ based on the look back period. I mean, the classic ones are 5, 10 or 15. If memory serves on my chart, that's a 10 year, uh, 10 year seasonal. So that's a positive influence for Bitcoin going future. Uh, I won't go into the trend map and I will uh, skip a step uh, because I haven't programmed that in trading you. That's and unfortunately that's a, a very interesting application I've got here. Um, but I haven't programmed it, so I'll be skipping it and go. You know, obviously the you know trend is up. That doesn't take um, you know special indicators to see that um so i will be skipping that and going straight to the macdv the momentum model right so the bottom panel is the macdv momentum and i've highlighted some parts um you know where the macdv was at the risk range with the exception of the 14th of april which was uh that by mistake so 10th of november 7th of uh, december 13th of march the uh, momentum indicator make a top uh, this is how the and how bitcoin um, responded to that. Now, there is one, uh, as we can currently see, Bitcoin is at the, um, the MACTV is at the risk range. Now, there is one um, more point that I would like to draw your attention on, and that's the, um, between uh, September, December and beginning of uh, 2024. I've got a little blue arrow pointing downwards. Obviously, that's a, a divergence on the MACTV and between price. And um, the MACTV is quite good at spotting divergences uh, because it's an unbound indicator. Um, 
but there is a special pattern there which I'm going to be programming the special version of the the premium version of the Mac TV. And uh, okay, I'll give you a bit of a hint where it is. The market was driving up, the indicator was going down. Obviously, you know, that's a classic divergence, but there is a little pattern there that while the market was stopping, the Mac TV was below its signal line. And that's what I call uh, a naked momentum high pattern. And um, that's that's something that markets usually show that they're you know uh, running out of steam. Um, again, I don't see this in the current situation you know, since March, but I just wanted to draw your attention on that. So what is the uh, short term? This is the short term momentum picture because in the previous chart, we saw the MAC TV with a classic you know, 12 in the 6 heading. Now we saw the MAC TV histogram, which, which is more indicative of a more short term momentum rather than intermediate term momentum. So uh, the highlights on the chart are the parts where the MAC TV histogram is above 40 or below 40. Again, these are short term overbought and oversold areas. The uh, chart here shows that uh, for the um, for the short term, um, the Bitcoin is a bit uh, oversold on an intermediate term basis. It's overbought, but on a, on an intermediate, on, uh, sorry, in a short term basis, it is oversold. So we have a bit of this uh, dichotomy. So okay, so let's go to, go to volatility valuation. What is volatility valuation? It's an indicator I have um, below because uh, I like to check volatility is one of the um, factors, key factors, the uh, price factors that I check. And this was um, inspired by actually a comment that um, John Bollinger made to me. And um, I'm sure, you know, he, uh, he said that to his presentations as well, um, that a low volatility is, is where trends are born and high volatility is where they go to die. And I've always found that very um, very inspiring in the sense that you know how can I define high low volatility um, so this is my attempt the indicator below to find where high volatility and low volatility resides and there are a lot of patterns that you can use through this high low volatility um, uh, regime so again this is a very a very simplistic view of you know where high and low volatilities uh, so as far as current conditions are concerned um bitcoin is coming off of a very very high a very high uh volatility uh regime and um, one of the things i like on the bottom panel indicator the volatility valuation indicator is an uh, is a boundless uh, indicator i have an unbound indicator and i have a thing for unbound indicators because they can uh, adapt to market conditions. Uh, the last part of my uh, methodology is relative ranking. When I just see the relative, uh, you know, as the name implies, the relative rank of all the futures markets that I'm following. Uh, of course, there is, you know, you can do it for any kind of asset class, even stocks. So out of the 74 um, futures markets I'm following, Bitcoin is right at the top below Coco. So it is an extremely, extremely powerful market for the time being. So um, that will play a big part in our methodology because I've got uh, threshold levels to not just say if it's you know, very strong, uh, you know, just rank them, you know, from comparison purposes, but also on an absolute basis to see, you know, what I will be doing further. So now that I've seen all the factors, what's the next step? You know, go to the setups to make an evaluation of all the factors collectively. And as a setup, you know, you know decide if I'm bullish or bearish. So this is my chart checklist. Um, the trend, obviously, of the business cycle, like I mentioned, we haven't, haven't, I haven't pigeonholed the, um, uh, Bitcoin, when it comes in the business, I know it's a risk on asset, you know, closely correlated to the Nasdaq, you know, proxy for that, but uh, I will be leaving it. Uh, and of course, my primary vehicle for business cycle evaluation is I've got one model for with the economic statistics on the monthly chart. And then I've got on the weekly chart, um, the classic um, Martin Prince intermarket correlations, the six stages. I've done a bit of work on it. But uh, like I mentioned, for this presentation, I won't be going into it. So for the COT, um, it's, I've got it close to bearish. 
strictly speaking, it's still bullish, but um, the indicator is very close to uh, giving a bearish signal. Sentiment is bearish. Seasonals are bullish. Um, as a factor, it's not as important as the previous, but you know it has to be taken into consideration. Trend, obviously, it's you know rapidly bullish. Momentum, uh, long term is bearish, as we see the indicator, the MACDV is coming uh, off of uh, a risk range, but short term the histogram is showing bullish. Um, but in general, I would classify momentum as a bearish factor. Volatility is bearish. And the relative anchor is very, very strong. So collectively, all these uh, indicators uh, on a, um, help me form an opinion and say that my Right now, my, my bias for uh, Bitcoin is definitely bearish, but because of the strong nature of the relative ranker, the, the numbers there, um, although I would not be taking any buy signals, at least for the immediate future, uh, if I was um, long, I would definitely be closing positions now. But because of the relative ranker, I will be uh, not be taking any short positions. So going forward to my next step is the signals. Now, so how do I take signals? I've got a mechanical signal generation system. So that's the basis of my, uh, let's go back one stage. Whoops, there you go. So the setup signal size and stops. This is a, a semi-systematic method I've got. So basically the setups is a discretionary rules based, based on the evaluation of the other factors. So if I've got, um, uh, a bias, definite bias that I want to be short or long, then I go to my signal generation mechanism, which is this, and I let I let it uh, enter based on what uh, uh, my system says, you know, if I want to be, uh, where I'm going to be entering. Now, on this chart, I've got both bullish, you know, both um, short and long entries, but obviously I won't be taking each and every one of them, just the ones that coincide with my bias. Um, so, strictly speaking, I don't have any um, I don't have any short signals here, but even if I did, I would be very hesitant because of the um, uh, very the very strong nature of the high uh, number for the relative ranker. So with that, um, a plus I have two exhaustion signals, as you can see, two of these bars. I've got these red dots on top of it, uh, which I'm going to be very uh, quickly programming in trading view. So with that, I would like to. Um, Thank you for, uh, for your attention.